hello guys so uh, we are continuing our lecture series that is we you know uh, lecture which we have started on the strength of material and in today's lecture lecture number 5 we going to discuss buckling of columns right now before discussing the buckling of column we must understanding the few fundamental thing regarding this buckling of columns now as now you uh, as of now you can see this figure there is a long rod you know cylinder rod a prismatic rod you can say prismatic means same cross sectional area throughout of its length right if i just consider the length l so same cross sectional area is there right 5 by 4 d square or maybe if it is a square cross section then whatever the dimension is square that will be the cross sections area that is same throughout of its length and what you are observing this long cylinder member is subjected to axial compressive load right because of the axial compressive load when the load is reaching to the particular value that particular value we are calling critical load that particular value we are calling what critical load right now if it is reaching to the critical value and when you are applying the load beyond the critical value of the load then the column or that particular vertical rod will be there that will burn that will be buckle or bent about some axis this bending phenomena is a very severe phenomena my dear in case of columns now you might be thinking sir we might be discuss the bending in the beam also like if i just talk about the beam then suppose this is the beam and we are applying some kind of load then what are the deformations and what were the deflections you might have seen so this was the elastic curve that we framed and here the we have said that okay this particular deflection must be less than the permissible one whatever the maximum deflection is there right pl cube or maybe here w load is there divided by 40 ati so whatever this value is there that has to be a permissible limit there we don't say this as a failure one but even though whatever amount of bending will happen whether it is a permissible or maximum or small we say that the column has been buckled and this phenomena where the buckling is happening bending is happening uh, happening about some axis we say it's a failure of columns we say it's a buckling of column we say it's a failure of column or buckling of column my dear friend right here so we must protect the beam or whatever the column is there to buckle it so for that and uh, for that uh, if you just ask to uh, uh, basically uh, one layman just how can you avoid the buckling he will say don't apply the load beyond the critical load so what is this critical load which is much more important than anything to discuss about in this chapter now let's focus our attention on this critical load and what is the formula for the critical load let's discuss about this you know so very first uh, very first thing is that a long cylinder member is subjected to axial compressive force a long cylinder member which is being subjected to axial compressive force are called as columns and whatever the lateral deflection would be there whatever the lateral deflection would be there my dear friend whatever the lateral deflection would be there that lateral deflection would be called as a buckling of column the lateral deflection will be called buckling of column or we say it's a failure of column this buckling shape is what just like a very similar to the sinusoidal function right you will see that full derivation then you will re realize that how this deflection curve is happening why not is it is deflecting some other uh, by some other you know basically by some other profile you know maybe like this why not something like this why only something like a sinusoidal function that will be decided by the whatever the derivation you know basically what we did for our uh, column analysis buckling of column analysis right so one thing is sure sort guarantees that we have to apply some kind of what we have to apply some kind of what load which is much more than critical load second is it has to be a axial compressive force not tensile force tensile force will never cause a column to buckle right now to understand the stability of the column you know why the buckling is happening how the buckling phenomenon is happening let's try to correlate with this topic with a little bit of understanding of the vibrations 
in the vibration my dear friend if any system is there suppose there is a spring mass system is there for example we try to dis uh, displace the mass from its equilibrium positions we try to displace the mass from its equilibrium positions you know from whatever the equilibrium position is there where the net forces are zero we try to displace that mass and we will we will see that okay how this motion is happening and that is what we call the natural frequency of the system if there is no damper right how much of time it is taking to vibrate to complete the cycles right now here also we will do in a very similar fashion we will try to disturb the uh, structure sir how can we disturb the structure now just focus on this diagram just focus on this diagram now in this you try to understand my dear friend this column is being subjected to this column is being subjected to some kind of axial compressive load as you can see p amount of load has been applied to the material and there is a some kind of stiffness uh, spring has been placed just to reduce the lateral deflection what we have just done we have done we have done some kind of supporting in, in the form of spring right bottom we have the support and in the top we have provided the support in uh, in the form of spring force no problem you try to disturb it by the amount p dash once you try to disturb it after disturbance this p dash will disappear it will not be there for the system after disturbance in the negative x directions what will be the positions let's see the position the position will be somewhere like this the position will be what the position will be somewhat like this where the low load p has been applied and now you disturb this body in the particular uh, this rod in the negative x direction the spring force will offer in the opposite directions that is not by uh, that is known by what the reaction forces that are offered by the spring force right now so if i just take the moment about b point this p load you know whatever that is distance will be there that i'm calling this to be x for example this is nothing but theta and this suppose original length was what l original length was what l so x can be written as what l into theta actually x can be uh, written as tan theta into l right but tan theta is very very small so that we can treat tan theta is almost equal to what theta only so if i just take the moment about b point summation of moment about b point equal to zero that means we are discussing about the what neutral positions right A static position static equilibrium for static equilibrium conditions in the static equilibrium condition what we do my dear friend summation of moment about any pinpoint to be zero right so what about the moment p into what x in this direction the spring force is what the spring force into what l right that has to be zero l into theta the spring force is what k into x minus k into x is what l into theta into l that is equal to zero so what you are observing k is p is equal to what k times of l this p will be this p will be called as p critical my dear friend this p will be called as p critical and what is its value k times of l make a note of it so if somebody will be asking you what is the definition what is the proper definition of the critical load what you will say the maximum axial load that a column can support when it is on the verge of buckling is called as critical load you only see yourself if p will be more than p critical if p is more than p critical or p is more than kl you try to observe if p is more than kl what you are observing my dear friend the moment has been offered by the p will be what will be more or less will be more because p is more than uh, kl then if i just multiply with the x on both the sides i will be getting my dear friend this p into x is a what the disturbing force k into l into x kx is a spring force into l that is a disturbing for re restoring force so 
So let me write here once again. This storing force, I'm calling this to be Px. Right? Disturbing force is nothing but P. Let me write not force, let me write movement. That is a good meaning over here. So as you can see, the disturbing movement is more as if it is more, P is more than P critical, it will be continuously deforming like this. It will be continuously deforming. It will be continuously disturbing the system. So it is a not a stable system. If P is more than P critical, that is a not a stable system. If P is less than P critical, then obviously P of X will be less than P of what? Uh, K into L into X. Then obviously disturbing movement is what? Less than uh, restoring movement. Then the beam will be what? The column will be what? Under stable conditions. In between stable and unstable, there is a one condition called neutral conditions. Right. And your just value of the load will be just equal to KL. Then, then you can say that, okay, it is just about to buckle. The moment you just supply more than P critical load by one Newton also, it will buckle. It will be unstable. Right. Because P is what? P is creating what? P is creating about this movement like this. It will further try to disturb it. But the spring force try to bring back the system to the original conditions, right? That's why we are calling restoring movement, right? Similar kind of uh, things you, you might have seen in a vibration also, right? Make a note of it. So we will try to uh, some catch some few points and we'll make a note of that. That is nothing but something, a maximum value of the load, a column can support when it is on the verge of buckling will be called as critical load. Make an important point. Very, very important. To understand the buckling of column, Euler, one of the scientists, a mathematician, he developed some equations for critical loads. And he has just framed the formulas, right? We will discuss those formulas, you know, not the derivation part. So you just note down critical load formulas. Critical load formula will be n square pi square ei divided by L square, right? Sir, what is the N first time we are learning? It's better that you modify here itself this formula so that no confusion will be there afterwards once we will discuss everything. L effective means effective length of the column. Effective length of the column. That is called L into alpha. Alpha is nothing but and fixity coefficient. That means it depends on the end conditions. So many types of support we have, you know, uh, fixed support, we have the pin support, we have the free support, that means there's a no support also. So we will discuss one by one, right? And will be, we are taking from one, two, three, something. Now, what you're observing? First case, we are discussing pin pin support. What is this? pin pin support? Pin pin support. In pin pin support, what we are observing? The rod is there, which is being supported bottom also at the top also. And it is being subjected to a compressive force like this. After application of the load, if P will be more than P critical, then the column will buckle like this. This is for n equal to one. This is called fundamental mode of failure. Fundamental mode of failure. Right? When n equal to two into the formula, when you put same end conditions, same end conditions, your L effective length is what? L into alpha. Alpha is what? Here is one. For pin pin case, for case number one, you can note down alpha is what? Alpha is equal to one. For pin pin case, you can note down alpha is equal to what? One. When alpha is equal to one, then directly uh, L alpha will, be, will become what? L effective will become what? L only. But N will be two. It will buckle like this. Right? So these are the some of the very, very important points that you must understand regarding the buckling of columns.
Now, the buckling of a pin and column, pin, pin, column in the first mode, in the first mode when n equal to 1 is called the fundamental case of buckling, column buckling, right? That I told you, right? Now, one more thing what we have discussed in our formula that p critical formula you, we have seen, right? p critical formula n square pi pi square e i minimum divided by alpha square l square because l effective we are writing you know l effective is what l into alpha this is the formula but you observe in the formula we have written i minimum moment of inertia should be minimum remember in the column the column will buckle about that axis about which the moment of inertia is least one what is the basic idea of studying the moment of inertia my different moment of inertia we discussed what is the meaning of moment of inertia moment of inertia is nothing but which deals with the uh, rigidity of the structure. That means uh, it will allow the resistance to some kind of, you know, uh, change in shape of the body. Or maybe we can say that, you know, the name itself is suggesting that moment of inertia, any moment will be there that will be restricted. Right? So if I take the large moment of inertia, the column will not buckle. The column will buckle about that axis where the least moment of inertia will be there about which the least moment of inertia will be there. So here, if I just talk about my different, you try understanding here, this is the cross section, right? As you can see, this cross section is a rectangular cross sections. This cross section is a rectangular cross sections where this particular axis is what BB axis. This particular axis is what AA axis. And if I just take the dimension, my different, the dimension I'm calling this to be width and depth. Width and depth. So if I just take the moment of inertia about IAA, then what you are observing D into WQ divided by 12. And if I just take the moment of inertia about IBB, what you are observing? You are observing that the moment of inertia about IBB will be W into DQ divided by 12. T is more than W. So what you are observing, my dear friend, you are observing that IBB is what? More than IAA. So what is the least moment of inertia? The least moment of inertia will be I A A into the formula. We have to keep it, right? So buckling will happen about the weaker axis, not the stronger axis. About the stronger axis, it will just apply the huge amount of inertia resistance to that moment. It will not buckle. It will definitely not buckle. So column may buckle about the weak axis. So you have to design according to the minimum moment of inertia, not the maximum moment of inertia. If you just design based on the maximum moment of inertia, it will buckle, the dimension may not be sufficient to resist the deformations, to resist the bending moment about the weaker axis and it will fail. So there's a no use of designing the column for the stronger moment of inertia. Right? So these are the few points that is a very, very important for solving a good numericals. Right? So we have discussed this one. This is, these are the formulas. E is the but what? Young's modulus of elasticity of the material, least moment of inertia, unsupported length, whose ends are pain. One more thing which is very important in case of column, that is for the purpose of design, we designed one radius of gyrations, right? Radius of uh, basically what gyration is one of the very, very important. In the radius of gyrations, my dear friend, what you are observing, we defined I is equal to what? A into R square, where R is nothing but minimum moment of initial divided by area. R is what? Radius of gyrations or gyration, whatever you call. See, so what we are putting P critical, pi square e i, i minimum is what? a into r square divided by l, l square. Just suppose, for example, I'm studying for pin pin connection. So I'm taking alpha equal to one. Remember, if pin pin support is not there, alpha will be different, right? So our basic formula is what? Basic formula will remain same. Pi square e i minimum divided by alpha square l square into n. This will remain same. But for this to understand, we must understand alpha will be different for different, different types of supports in which column has been supported, right? Now, sigma is what? Critical stress will be what? P critical divided by what? Area. So pi square E i R square divided by L square. So pi square E i L square divided by R square. I'm calling this to be one term. That is a cylinderness ratio. That is nothing but L effective divided by radius of gyrations or gyrations. No doubt. S is nothing but slenderness uh, 
ratio. It is a ratio of the effective length to the what? It is a ratio of the effective length to the least radius of gyrations, right? Very, very important. So final formula will be what? Critical stress can be written as pi square E i divided by what? Pi square E divided by what? S square. Very important. Now you might be thinking, sir, why? What is the purpose of studying this slenderness ratio? The purpose of studying this slenderness ratio is nothing but we can classify the column based on the value of the slenderness ratio. Long column, short column, or medium column. Right? So these are the this particular table is very, very important where each and every cases has been discussed. Pin pin column, as we have seen, alpha is equal to what? One. Alpha here they have denoted by what? K. So I'm just taking alpha is equal to what? Same thing. So what is the critical load formula? Critical load formula is what? N square E I minimum divided by K square L square. Alpha is equal to K. Right? Earlier, whatever we have done the notation like alpha, you can just take the same notation, right? You know, alpha is equal to K. K is only but one for pin pin fixed, like a cantilever support and the free end, we have the what? Effective length will be 2L and the critical load will be what? 1 by 4th, right? When you just free the support on the top side, we don't have support. Little bit of load you will require, you know, to buckle it. That's why it is getting reduced by what? 3 by 4th. That is 1 by 4th. We have the value of critical loads. Fixed, fixed column, lot of amount of load you need to apply. That's why it is 4 times. Remember all these particular cases we are discussing. All the cases are what? Fundamental mode of failure. All the conditions are pertaining to our fundamental fundamental mode of failure. Fundamental mode of failure. Fundamental mode of failure, my dear friend. That means all the cases are we are discussing n equal to one. If n equal to two, things need to be modified. Things need to be modified. That means. What are the modifications suppose? For example, this is a case, right? When n equal to 2, then the critical load formula will become what? 4 pi square e i divided by 4 l square for n equal to 2. For n equal to 2. This is for n equal to 1. n equal to 1. n equal to 1. n equal to 1. Getting a point? That is the second fundamental mode of failure when n equal to 2. First fundamental mode of failure, or we say a fundamental mode of failure, we say n equal to 1. Getting my point. One more thing is the fixed and pin column. One end is fixed one, like a cantilever support, and one is what? Pin support. Remember, in most of the textbook, you will find not this value. This is taken from the gear. Right? So here they have written 2.046. But in, in examination, when you put P critical as 2 into pi square E i divided by L square, that is also correct for this case, for D case. That means you can take k value as 0 0.707. That is also correct. 1 upon root 2. That is also correct. That is also correct. Right? Whatever the answer will be given based on this and based on this, both will be there in the range. So what we have done the uh, till now, the particular, the formula wise things we have checked out. Now let's focus our attention on the numerical part. Right? Now, as you can see, the first question is there in front of us. A rigid bar of the length L is supported by the linear elastic rotational spring. Remember, whatever we have done, that is the idealized structure. Idealized structure, my dear not a real structure. You will not see the beam to be bent like this. You know, you will see the beam to be bent like this, like a curvature only. But we have assumed that it is an ideal one where we don't have uh, basically what Young's modulus or EI uh, flexural, whatever the flexural rigidity EI value is being just uh, stored at the one particular point, not spread throughout of its length of the column. Now, but you might be thinking one more thing. So here we don't have linear spring. Here we have the rotational spring. What is this? This is a rotational spring. So generally spring, we have the two types. No down spring we have the two types one is linear spring second we have the rotational spring one is our linear spring second we have the rotational spring 
that means you might have seen this you know this is a linear string where stiffness is what k right but we have sometime some kind of you know symbol like this this is a rotational spring we just denoted by beta r or in some of the textbook you will find kt this is called rotational stiffness what we call a rotational rotational stiffness right what is the uh, unit newton meter per radian okay this is nothing but newton per meter getting my point now to analyze the basically what is the critical load we must disturb the system let's disturb the system by the amount p dash after that p dash will be disappear what will be the structure it will form like this getting my point here the load p is there here it will be x you know and this will be the theta now so if i just draw the free body diagram what it will do the spring the spring will say come back and it will offer some kind of spring movement what is the value beta r into theta newton meter per radian you know into theta that will be what newton meter only so you just take the summation of moment about a point what you going to observe my different you going to observe that p into x p into x that is in the anti clockwise direction moment of spring that is in the clockwise directions that is equal to zero x is what x is nothing but l into theta when you just focus your attention on c b dash b and this triangle you know so what you are observing this is theta so this particular triangle this way this particular triangle x l so what you are observing tan theta will be what x by l so theta will be what x by l so what we are writing p into what l into theta beta r into what theta equal to zero so what you are observing p is nothing but beta r divided by l that will become what critical load that will become what that p will become what critical load we are just maintaining the neutral condition you know where it is not a uh, deflecting further not it is coming back it is just at the neutral conditions and it is just about to verge that means about to buckle if p is slightly more than pcr it will buckle if p will be less than pcr it will be what coming back to its original positions getting my point so this will be the answer beta r divided by l right now this is the one more question we have the figures of the idealized that's why they have mentioned idealized right in actual scenario we never going to have the bending like this that's why you are observing one more thing what you are observing what you are observing this shape is not a uh, elastic curve shape it is just like a rigid body because we are assuming that this idealized structure or column to be just like a rigid column right a figure so idealized structure consists of two rigid bar see rigid bar right in that we have seen that bending will not be there you know ei will be what infinity right the rotational stiffness is beta r what is the critical load of this structure for this case again we have to disturb the system from its original equilibrium conditions so if i assume this is nothing but equilibrium conditions so if i disturb it from here so what will be observing this will be the same it will it will be deflecting like a rigid body you know now so what you are observing you can take the above part or below part whatever the part you can do and you can take the analysis you can consider like this or you can consider this one both the portion you can take and you can do the analysis i am taking the above portion c part and b dash part and we are c at c we have the load p so we are trying to shifting this load p here here also the spring will offer some kind of movement the spring will offer some kind of movement my different at the top it will be offered some kind of movement like this at the middle also it will offer some kind of movement like this right and what we are taking summation of moment about b dash point to be zero we are taking summation of moment about b dash point summation of moment about b dash point we are taking what to be equal to zero so if i take the summation of moment about b point to be zero what we are observing my dear friend try understanding so this will be what this will be l by 2 so p into x That is the what clockwise. M C is about anti-clockwise about B point. 
minus of mc minus of mb that is equal to zero. Getting my point. X is what? Once again, I am writing l by two into theta from this triangle. This will be theta. This will be theta. So what about the beta r? This movement will be what? Beta r into theta. But what about this? Beta r into that is a very much interesting. Initially, what is this angle? One eighty degree. What about the final angle? This will. This is theta. This is theta. This is what? One eighty minus two theta. So what is the initial angle? One eighty. What is the final angle? One eighty minus two theta. So what is the final deflections in the spring? The final theta dash will be what? One eighty minus one eighty minus two theta. So that will be two theta. That is only the trick. That is only the tricky thing in this particular numerical. So p into l by two into theta. That is equal to beta r into theta plus beta r into two theta. So p will be what? P will be getting what? Three beta r into two divided by l. So p will be what? Six beta r divided by l. This will be the answer. So this is one of the important. See, this is spring. Initially, it was what? Initially, it was what? Which particular angle? Like a what? What we have? The final angle. See, initially, this is nothing but the angle. If I just take, <coughs> if I talk about C point, so you can just take the example. What was the angle? Suppose one eighty degree. You know, imaginary. I'm just assuming at the Uh, at this rod above uh, above the point C, we have imaginary you know structure or rigid bar, which is making an angle what one eighty degree. The final angle is what? The final angle is what? The final angle is what? You can just take the example of one eighty plus this is what two theta. So this will be what? One eighty minus two theta. Right. So, what is the angle? Initial angle is what? One eighty degree. Final angle is what? Three sixty minus what? Two theta. So, what you are observing, my dear friend? Two theta minus one eighty degree, or you can just take one eighty minus two theta. Right. So, what you are observing? Cos one eighty minus two theta. What you'll be getting? Cos two theta only. So final angle is what two theta. Or instead of doing this one, instead of doing this particular step directly, you can remember you know one thing. See, this beta, this this particular point B is very much clear. Why the angle is, is two theta? That is a clear initial angle is what one eighty degree between the two particular supports. You know this one and this one. One eighty degree. What is the final angle? The final angle is what? Final angle is what? One eighty minus two theta. That's why initial minus final. If I do, I will be getting what? Two theta, right? But for what about this one? Initial angle is what? Zero degree, and the final angle is what? Theta. So the ultimately angle is what? Theta only. One theta only. That is only the trick in these questions. Getting my point. Similarly, here also what we have taken beta r into theta because it has been it's displaced by what? Theta amount. Initially zero degree, and final is what theta, right? The same thing we are doing for this case, but only the trick is beat uh, whatever the moment uh, at B offered by the spring force that will be a little bit tricky one. That's it. Now you can solve the same thing by taking the B dash and A point also. Same thing you can do by taking B dash and A also. Here there will be some moment A will be coming into the picture. Moment B also will be coming into the picture. Some kind of load will also be coming here. P P load is coming, B point, and that is what it is coming. If it is not been the act, ideal one, then what will be the actual free body diagram? Actual free body diagram would be something like this. Let me show actual free body diagram. It would be something like this. P load P. There will be some deflection like this. First of all, it will be deflecting like this. You know, there is a P. This is offering some kind of moment in which direction? Like this. So it will offer some movement like this. This is a bending movement. This is a bending movement. Remember, right? And whatever the apart from other thing, remaining things will be coming. But in our case, we are taking bending movement to be zero because we are focusing 
we are treating that EI will be concentrated at a particular point, not the spread it throughout the length of the member. Because it is the ideal one, not an actual one. Just for our understanding, what is the basically the meaning of column, buckling of column, how the stability, stability will be related to that particular column, buckling of column. That is what we are learning through this idealized structure. Nothing much we are dealing with that. Our purpose is to get the pre-critical. That's it. Then we will throw this idealized structure and we'll, we'll be what? Designing our actual beam, actual column. Right? Now, see, this is a one type of another problem. Now, a horizontal beam of sliding support C. Many of you, you might be learning only the, you know what? Two types of support. That is a fixed support. That is a cantilever support. And then we have the pin support or we, we, we might have discussed the hinge support or some kind of roller support. But one support, one more support is there we call sliding support. Sliding support means, no down, very first thing, sliding support, which offer no CFOs. Which offers sliding support means which offers no CFOs, my dear. It will allow the vertical deflections, but it will develop resisting movement. Like, uh, like in case of this one, you know, like this case, what we have, my dear friend, here we have the uh, in support. In support, movement will be zero. Movement will be zero, you know. But here in this case, movement will not be zero. Here we have the movement. Here movement is what? About a point to be zero. Sorry. Here the movement will be zero. Here movement at a point will not be equal to zero. So you cannot use that equation where you have summation of movement at a point to be zero. Yes, you can use it. But you need to know that what is the resisting movement offered by the sliding support A. This is the roller support. Remember, this is the roller support. This is the sliding support. Both are not same. Both are different. Let's focus our case A. First thing. That is that this figure is for A. This figure is for what? B part. For A part, my different, what they are saying that sliding support, we are applying some kind of load Q. They are saying what is the Q value that is a Q critical when the column will buckle in either of the, you know, because of the this particular Q critical, either of this column will be buckled. You only tell me when Q will be just equal to QCR, when the load in the member will be equal to what? PCR. Why I'm writing with the equal PCR? Because both are made up of same material, same diameter, same geometry, same length is there, same pin pin connection. Here also pin connection, here also pin connection, right? And at a point, this will be this, uh, this one. Now summation of forces in the y direction will be zero. You can take because here you have the reaction moment, but vertical force will be zero. Vertical reaction will be zero because it is allowing the movement. You know, if any support will allow the movement in that particular direction, there will not be any force, no movement. If movement will be allowable, no reaction movement. If movement is not allowable, reaction movement will be coming. So PCR plus PCR will be QCR. So what is the QCR? 2 PCR. That means two times of what? Pi square EI minimum divided by L square. Because it is a pin pin connection. So alpha will be what? Alpha or K will be what? One. Give me a point. So these are the few things which are very, very important. Now, further what you are observing for B part. For B part, it is a very simple understand. This is the moment B. This is the D point. This is the B, C point, A point. There will be some reaction forces at a point. There's a no doubt about that. They are asking what should be the values of M when it is just equal to M critical. When it is just equal to M critical, this load will become what? PCR, PCR. Initially, the load will be P only, P only. But the moment, if it is, we are applying more and more amount of low uh, movement, then automatically this P will be reaching, reaching to what? PCR, P critical value. Not take summation of moment about A point to be zero. Then what we are observing? M. That is equal to what? PCR. This distance will be what? D plus PCR. This particular distance is what? 2D. So what is the value of M? 
3 PCR into D. And if final answer, if somebody want to know, 3 into D into pi square EI divided by what? L square. Once again, it is a pin pin connection. Here also pin, here also pin, here also pin. Pin pin connection, we're going to have alpha or k equal to 1. So this type of problem they mostly ask in gate examination also. So try to focus your attention on this chapter as it is very, very important chapter. Right? Thank you all.